Hey, what's up? This is Jamal Abbott. Thanks for tuning in. I got a special guest on the show and really excited to have this person on. We've already had lots of fun and we're just going to jump right into this. So Lisa, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, Jamal. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Uh, my name is Lisa Mann. I am a visionary CEO and co-founder of a company called Authentic Kid, which is a compliance and software security, uh, cybersecurity software um, that verifies the identity of minors, um, and it protects data uh, under COPPA law, as well as um, prevents uh, predatory attacks. So, um, my my biggest passion in life has always been. Um, champion of the underdog and protecting kids. Um, as a mom of six and a grandmother of seven, yes, I have lots of stories. Like I'm 80, but I'm only turning 50 this year. Um, uh, you know, it, it's important to me that we get ahead of this 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 curve. Um, right now, with over 55 million kids home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we basically turned over the keys to the candy store with these predators. Um, and the time is now to get Authentic Kid out on the market. So thank you so much. Your timing couldn't have been better for us. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, thanks for coming on. And um, I, I want to jump to something that we had talked about uh, offline. And we were talking about this idea of how kids were in danger back in the old days. So when I was growing up and then, so I, I'm in my mid thirties, I'm about 36. So okay. I remember growing up, um, there was this danger with uh, what you described was the the, the white van. So we, we knew at that, right. at that age, we weren't supposed to talk to strangers. We knew that uh, if somebody approached you and then offer you candy, like you stay away from those people, um, right. you know, period. So, it's interesting that you mentioned 55 million kids are at home right now. So I, I, I'm curious about the, the dangers that are out there right now. So could you talk a little bit more about what you're seeing and then maybe what you could give as advice to parents who maybe not be aware of what's going on online? Absolutely. The first thing I want to say to parents is, yes, it is going on. We're already stressed to the hilt. Do not feel guilty if you miss something because in regular day-to-day -day life, it gets missed all the time. Not that that makes it good or any better, but kids are great at hiding these things. They are just as embarrassed to talk about things. So don't beat yourself up. Don't. Um, the dangers that are out there are astronomical and it's crazy. Um, over a million kids, for example, Jamal, in 2017, over a million kids fell victim to identity theft. That's not something we ever think about. I, that was the last thing on my mind um, when, I, when I started researching and doing all this. I mean, of course, I thought about cyberbullying, right? Because when, when social media started, back in the days of AOL and chat rooms and MySpace, um, people would make nasty comments and you, you see, you, you know, there are trolls, right? If, if it's happening with adults, it's happening with kids. Um, there's, you know, there's, before the pandemic, 74 million kids in the United States, more than 55 million plus are mandated under stay-at-home rules at this point. Um, here in Virginia, we're, we're stay-at-home uh, until June 10th already. Um, so these kids are home and they're online. Experts are telling us, you know, to relax the rules in regards to uh, screen time um, because everybody has to stay social. Um, there's been a 60, a roughly a 60% increase in everyone's time involved in electronics and screen time and things like that since the beginning of COVID-19, um, adults and kids. So, and, and that stands to reason. We have to try and stay connected somehow. 
you've got cyberbullying, suicide rates between for the kids between the ages of 10 and 14 triple in the last decade. Um, the average age for a kid to sign up for social media now, even though the little check mark box says 13, is 10. Now, people wonder, you know, how is that possible? They're, where are their parents at? You know what? Their parents are doing what every other parent is doing. They're cooking. They're cleaning the house. Their kids have tablets. They know how to download apps. Sure, can you put a parental control on there to, you know, not allow them to, to download apps? Sure you can. Um, are they going to get around it? They sure are. Um, it's no different than when we were, you know, tweens and teens sneaking out of the house to go sit by, with our friends by the lake. And if you were just sitting by the lake or if you were drinking by the lake, the, the, what we did has just transferred into online life. Um, they very much see their online, quote unquote, friends as being real friends, whether you're talking about people that are gaming over Xbox Live together um, over the course of years. Um, one of my daughter-in-laws has two very good friends who she has gamed with for seven years, and they've never met in person, but they always plan to. Um, and, they're, and they're like her best friends, she says. Um, and she's 25. Um, you've got cyberbullying. You've got um, suicide issues that are raising because of depression and anxiety and um, peer pressure to, you know, meet society's expectations. You've got, um, you know, public humiliation because everybody is, is, has their phone camera out for any given moment. You know, the identity theft, as I mentioned. And, of course, you've got sexual predators. Um, and they're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere, and they're just waiting for our kids. Um, it's, it's devastating when you think about it. Being a mom of six and a grandmother of seven, and so many more call me mom, <laughs> because when you raise kids, and at least the way I did, I was the house that everybody came to. Um, you know, parents could call and say, hey, have you seen my kid? Yeah, he's here having a taco, whatever. Um, between game night and choir and um, wrestling and football. Um, I, I probably have over 100 kids that still call me mom today. Kids have always been my passion. So, and, and making sure that they're safe and protected and feel and have a place to talk and have a voice. Um, I'm, not, I, I'm not one to take away options and choices because I think that kids have to learn one, as parents, as community leaders, it's our job to teach kids how to make a decision. It's kind of like that, that Bible parable that says, you know, give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish, he'll eat for the rest of his life kind of thing. Right. If you teach a child how to make a decision, they'll make better choices and decisions. It's all about communicating with your kids. That's the biggest thing I can tell parents right now. Um, talk to your kids at an age-appropriate level. Um, you know, say, hey, not everybody online is your friend. If you don't know them in real life right now, we're not going to have them as your friend. You're not gonna, we're not going to have all that going on right now. Um, you know, mom and dad need to be able to, and, and, and again, it's also age appropriate because, you know, once they're that thir that checkbox 13, what you can say and do is a little more limited. Um, COPA 2.0, actually, when that is put into legislation, because right now we're dealing with COPA, but 2.0 actually stipulates that over the age of 15, the kid has to actually give permission to the parent to track them geographically. So, which put, wow. yeah, which is very, very interesting. Um, so if you've got a 15 year old who um, wants to sneak out 
and they have they will be given a toggle button to turn that part of their app off and they don't have to be found that makes it very very dangerous when you're talking about sexual predators wow yeah so, yeah. so a couple yeah. thoughts come to mind as I'm, you know, I know I rambled there. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're, you're fine. But no, a couple, couple of thoughts came to mind and it's actually happened yesterday. So my, my son, he's, um, he's uh, about 10 years old, but he's, he's mm -hmm. a big time, um, gamer. So he, li he likes playing games on the computer on the Nintendo switch. And yeah. he, came, he came to me the other day because, well, one, he's, he doesn't have any money. <laughs> right. So broke. He, right, bro. <laughs> you you kind of need me for some of these financial transactions on, online. But so he has money on his Steam account. So for the people that don't know, Steam is like an online store. I, I had to look this right, up because right. I, I don't I don't game. Um, <laughs> Steam's an online store where you can buy games and other software and things like yes. that. He had money on on his account, but he mm -hmm. needed to enter in um, my information. A code. Yep. So like my, 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 my name, my address, and he could have easily did that himself, but mm -hmm. I was so proud of him for actually just bringing this to me and say, Hey dad, can you enter <clears> this <throat> in? I'm like, yeah. Oh man, like that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad that you did that. You know? That's really respectful. And, and yes, you should be proud as a parent that he did that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. That's, that's good communication. And then the other thing I think about too, with, um, you know, uh, the kids having the option of being, uh, not tracked by by the parents I'm, I'm sitting there thinking like okay if you're 15 and i'm just assuming that you don't have a job how can you opt out to not being tracked as far as the device is concerned if you're not actually paying for that stuff so that's what i'm thinking about as a parent right right because because you know there is that big fight right now about um parents giving electronics to kids and the debate of it's not a right, it's a luxury. Um, it's a, it's, you know, it, it, I paid for it, it's mine. But technically under law, if you give it to them, it's a gift. There's actually been legal issues with this. <laughs> and then you've got the issue of the fact that as a parent, we are legally responsible for them until they turn 18 right to, to the point to the tune of example um again i have three older boys i'm a, a self-made brady bunch i have three boys and then three girls so mm -hmm. i dealt with all the boy issues first if a young man goes out gets involved in a romantic relationship and the young lady becomes pregnant financially speaking do you know who pays child support until the until that that young man turns 18 the parents do that i did not know yes sir yes sir so be prepared for that information when you're having that big talk with your 10 year old son <laughs> that's right because because i did load it that way um I sure did. I made sure that my kids knew. It all comes down to trust. It all comes down to the foundation of trust, the circle of trust, as they said in that movie. Um, you have to start communicating with your kids and keeping, keeping it so that they're not afraid to come to you, number one. With any kind of questions, don't make them feel stupid. Um, bringing you information that they, they might be afraid to. It's, you've got to get that under control early, early. And really, it's not getting the kid under control. It's us as adults. And we, we, we react out of fear more than anything. Absolutely. Um, because we're afraid of how it's going to affect their future. We're afraid of, of what the possibilities are because we've seen it all. And our kids don't know that. But we have, um, and we have to convey that um, in 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 the most responsible way possible. It's not easy. No, you know, they don't give us a a, a, a code book to, to decode these kids with cheat codes on how to get them to do what we need them to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I did. Oh, here's here's a trick. 
Um, I did figure out during the COVID-19 quarantine that Simon Says works really well for chores. <laughs> I did learn that. That's that's. So we're trying to instill that at this point still. But I, I think I might yeah. have to take a play out of your playbook there with Simon got Says. It. You got it. That and then making chores as fun as possible. So yeah. Um. So you so you mentioned COVID nineteen, and obviously we're 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 dealing with this at at this present moment, and um, hoping that it's getting better soon. But it, it, it all depends on you know the information that you're taking in about the progress with uh, fighting this this virus. But I'm I'm curious. This is a question that was um, something that came up in a Toastmasters meeting that we had last night. So the the question I have for you is coming into 2020. I I, I imagine that you had your own set of plans of how you oh. wanted to attack 2020 and and what it was going to go like. And then COVID 19 popped up and that mm -hmm. changed, like everything for everyone. So wondering how this has affected your plans coming into 2020 and then what adjustments you've had to make since that. Oof, that's a wonderful question. Um, and I just broke the Toastmaster rule right there. <laughs> it's all good. It's I love it. Uh, it's been so long since I've been to a meeting. I feel like I need to go. Uh, I would say that my plans for 2020 slowed in some areas they've just adjusted does that make sense it does um what, going into 2020 we had originally created a totally different product this product was actually a part of it our original product was a kid social media website which we are still going to do but it's on the back burner because without authenticate i absolutely refuse to put a social media website out there um, I'm not going to have, I'm not going to be like everything else that's out there. And for anybody who's listening, parents, if your kids are on social media, there are predators everywhere. I don't care what social media website you're on. They're full of predators. Um, and that's no lie with, with our, our product, we don't go by the trust policy. A lot of companies go by the trust policy. In other words, like you said, your son could very easily just put your name and address into the Steam account, right? Um, because, but because there's a parental control on there, he got you to do it. He could have done it, and there's no difference than a predator creating a parental account and a child account, but it's all the same person. Mm. Under those trust factors, because they're not verifying that you are who you are and that your child actually exists. We do that. And we protect the companies by retaining that information. We're the only ones that get the data. Okay. So your child's data is safe. It's not going anywhere except for anything that they need to actually enable their account. Um, it keeps them completely COPA compliant. So the only things that any of our clients will get, which would be, and when I say client, I mean companies that take advantage of utilizing our services, um, they will only get the bare minimum of what they need to be functional on that site. Let's, let's just talk about kids council for a second, because that's my social yeah. media site. I don't want to talk about big name companies because we're not working with any of them right now, but let's say that, that somebody was on our social media site, our social media site, the parents get toggle controls to let, you know, let us know, what their kids can upload, what their what their kids can be a part of. Um, we get all those parental permissions. In fact, we even send out because they would be an authentic. They'd be coming in through authentic kid. They would actually get daily, weekly uh, bulletin saying, "Hey, by the way, your kid was on X Y Z site, so they were on our kids council site, um, and they uploaded three pictures today." They would have the ability to go and re review those pictures and make sure that they're okay with what went out there. And that's all, and that's all fine and good by COPA. In fact, it goes above and beyond what COPA asks for right now. Oh, interesting. Um, as far as the predatory part, kids are identified as having been verified. So, and we actually also identify them in age groups. So, for example, five to eight gets a certain color 
emblem. 9 to 12 gets another color emblem. 13, 14, that middle school age, they get another emblem. And that's when, when regular social media knows that they are of age, current age. COPA 2.0 matches GDPR, which is going to be 15, 16, possibly 17 to be on regular social media. So all of these big companies that have been hit by COPA compliance fines and all that stuff, they're about to get hit again with a second wave once COPA 2.0 comes into play. Interesting. Okay. So, so that's why we do age appropriate groups because quite frankly, um, when you have siblings, they get into, you know, they get into their older or younger siblings business. They want to stalk their siblings online. No. <laughs> so we, we, if, if, if social media or other gaming groups or whatever want to take and take a page out of our playbook um, with kids council, we're actually putting our kids into age appropriate groups. So they can't talk. We don't have that, that backseat. I'm touching you. I'm touching you. I'm touching you thing go on um, because there is a lot of cyberbullying that goes on between siblings. Um, and it's unnecessary. Um, so, by identifying kids in different age groups, that breaks up some of that predatory behavior that can happen offensively or defensively um, between minors. But then again, because we're verifying, I think I mentioned to you, we've all lied about our age, right? Right, we, right. At one point in our lives, we've either said, yeah, look, I, I'm I'm 18. Um, I'd love to go out with you, but you know, we're 15, 16 on a cruise ship with our parents. I've never done this before. I this is just something I'm making up. I'm kidding. It was absolutely me. <laughs> um, I wanted to hang out with the older kids, um, and on the cruise ship, um, you could drink at at 18. Um, oh. Back then, you can see. Yeah. Um, I went, well, then I went to Europe when I was 17 and I didn't have to worry about that anymore. That was crazy. But <laughs> I went with the Greater Chicago Youth Corral. But we've all lied about our age, whether it's to go, whether it's up in age because we wanted to feel cooler and we wanted to be included with the older kids. Um, or, <laughs> you know, um, gosh, you don't look like you're a day over 35. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to turn 50 this year. But now you're my best friend and I'll be at your house. Once this COVID-19 crisis is over. Right. Um, we've, we've all done it. So for a kid to check that, that little checkbox saying that they're over 13, it's going to happen. You just, have to, you, you just have, have to try and sit down with them and have a conversation with them and try and find something that's going to be age appropriate for them. Really and truthfully, people, I mean, I, look, I like Facebook. I'm on Facebook. I'm an mm -hmm. adult on Facebook. Right. Um, I use Facebook. I use Instagram. I use LinkedIn. I use Snapchat. I, I use lots of different forms of social media for lots of different reasons. I use Twitter. Um, the thing is, is that I use Pinterest. Um, and I never thought of Pinterest as being social media until I realized that you could connect and follow other people and send messages and share boards and all kinds of stuff. But find something that's going to be age appropriate for your kid. Right now, according to authorities that are out predator hunting, um, and I do have a really big, exciting announcement about that today. Um, right now, the number, the, the two of the hottest places for predators to be is TikTok and WhatsApp. Oh, uh, okay. That, that makes sense. It and, does. Um, be, especially with the, the, the youth demographic with... Um, mm -hmm. TikTok. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the other things that Authentic Kid does is we do create duplicate profiles for authorities to use, um, so that they can go in to these social media apps, to these um, game sites, and just hang out. It's amazing how absolutely gross and disgusting these pedophiles are um, that don't even that some of them don't even lie about their age they're 35 and think that the 13 year old girl is sexy it, like it makes me want to vomit just even saying it um, 
but one of our, we are actually partnering with, they're pretty crazy though. It's called Waits List. They are predator hunters. They are a private citizen built predatory group. Um, predator, they turn predators into prey. Um, they go after these predators online. They turn over all of the texts pictures, video, audio that go to the FBI. They go to um, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Um, once those people are not only charged, but they are convicted, then everything is gone. Let's say, for example, they don't get a conviction because it happens all the time. Typically, by the time a sex offender is convicted, they've already touched over 100 kids. Okay? Touched. If they can't get them convicted, <laughs> Zane Waits actually goes and confronts them. Zane uh, is an ex-military MMA fighter. His, his website is Waits List. W-A-I-T-S-L-I-S-T. And you can see his videos. He shows up at people's place of employment and absolutely confronts them saying, Hey, am I as hot and sexy as that 13 year old you were texting yesterday that you set up to meet here today? Cause I don't, I don't think I look that bad, but I'm sure as heck not a 13 year old little girl. And he, and he does it in front of their coworkers. Um, it's controversial, but in my opinion, it's absolutely necessary as a parent. If somebody put their hands on my kids, I just, I don't know what I would do. It would be, it would be very, very difficult for me to restrain myself and allow the law to take care of it. I would have to, don't get me wrong, but if the law couldn't see it through fruition and put that guy in jail, right. I'd want somebody like Waits going after him and, 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 and letting them know, letting everybody around that person know that this person is a pedophile, this person has done this. You know, it's controversial. I understand. Um, but at the same time, if if we can't get the conviction, that just means that there's another 100 kids that are at risk easily. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, wow. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on. And I know when I think about social media and just think about just the um, all the apps that are out there. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot to, to to keep up with, and there's a there's a different app for for every different oh, yeah. situation. And and, and um, there's and now you know we just had Bite come on 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 the line, um, which is a shorter version because you know, gosh, we need things to be shorter. Um, but Byte is now just basically a shorter version of TikTok from what I understand. I haven't been on it yet, but um, that's a new one. And we've got, I mean, there's there's a new app for everything. Right, absolutely. And, and, and I, you know, just kind of think about um, the, the parents here, um, you know, we named off a bunch of apps, but, you know, let's just say that you're not even like up on that stuff. Like you're, you're completely like out of the loop with what your, 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 your kid or what your teenager is doing other than they're mm -hmm. spending a lot of time on their phone and they're doing videos and, you know, or, or doing just, you know, silly things like that. So, so those right. are some of the things I, I think about with, um, um, that, you know, the safety of our kids, um, we can't protect our kids if we don't really know what they're doing. And just to go, go back to what you said earlier, having that communication is, is really important, you know? It really is. Now there are, there, there are, like I said, we have competition that are out there. What they do is there, there are, there are parental control systems out there that says, you know, no, they can't be on this app. Yes, they can be on this app, but they can't do this or they need my permission to do this. Now for like example, Google has their, um, they have a, a family, uh, filter basically that goes through all this information they don't drive me as crazy and that's the other thing too is you get notifications for all this so if you have two kids and you're getting all of this these screen time notifications uh yeah yep um i will dig my eyeballs out <laughs> i mean I, and you don't want you don't 
it, it takes a little while to sign up for some of these things. Um, the longer it takes, the, the more secure they are. I'll be honest. Um, ours is going to take a hot minute for people to, to sign up because there are several different verification steps that they have to go through, including uploading three different pictures. Um, oh, interesting. Um, one of which includes both the parent and the child together. Because the kicker, like I said, is a lot of these predators, and that's what makes authorities laugh all the time when, I, when we talk. Um, and I remember, I remember approaching our potential first client. I said, how are you verifying that the kids that are on your site are actually kids? And they broke the Toastmasters drill immediately. Uh, <laughs> we're not. Oh. Welcome to Authenticate. Boom. Because if you're not verifying that these kids are kids, every single person on the planet, we've been, we've had social media for 20 years. We all know what a catfish is. Yep. Absolutely. If you don't think that predators are out there catfishing your kids, you've lost your mind. Until we get to the point where we're verifying that kids are kids. And we go, we go a few extra steps. I mean, um, we verify that the parent is not only the parent, but that the parent is not on a sexual predators list. Mm. Because predators have kids. And when you're talking about sex trafficking and things like that, kids are pressured into getting other kids involved. That's how, I mean, if you look at the whole Epstein issue, you had that lady Giselle who would go and find these young ladies and he, with, with all of his contacts with Victoria's Secret and all that, they would go and entice these young girls to be a part of whatever they were doing. <laughs> Because, you know, again, it's, it's all allegations until somebody is found guilty. They would, that, but that was their MO. They would go and they would put younger girls involved to get to entice other younger girls to get involved. It was peer pressure, blackmail, and, and, and because then once you get a kid involved, then the real ugliness starts. I'll hurt right. your family. I'll tell your family, your parents will never talk to you again. You know, the whole family will be ashamed of you. And that's how they keep them in there. The key is don't even let them get near them. Period, point blank, dot, the end. The end. So right. once we verify that that's an actual kid, then we verify that the parents are not only the parents, but they're not on the sexual predators list. Got it. Okay, so as much as I like, to, I, I believe in in the inherent good of man. I don't believe in the trust policy of the internet. <laughs> Does that make sense? No, it I mean, it makes it makes total sense. And so 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 basically, the, the way I'm looking at this, so authenticate obviously identifies the the age that the kid just to make sure that that they are who they say they are. And then you 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 marry that with the upcoming social site for for the kids, kids council. So these two Correct. work hand in hand with one another. Yes. So, um, is it is it possible that um, these other organizations can use Authenticate first, just to make sure that they they absolutely tie okay absolutely. Perfect. Let's say um, there's a there's a company. What's it called? Tiny Labs. Um, Tiny Labs is still involved in their um, lawsuit um, as a provider, I think, through YouTube. Um, uh, any, of, any of those types of companies could use Authenticate um, and actually make their lives so much easier. Like right now, YouTube, which is a huge company, and it's not like Google couldn't do this themselves. But I've already got it mapped out, Google, so just give me a call. <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> seriously, um, YouTube right now, you've got a lot of, of influencers um, because the FTC made it very, very clear that they can not only go after YouTube for hosting these videos, but they can go after the, in, the individual influencers as well. 
um, if they're not marking their their videos as for kids. Because there's no identification and verification that these are actual kids that are watching the videos, that's why they can't communicate between each other. That's because that's that's considered um, collecting data. Mm. Comments are considered collecting data. But that could be considered essential to the site's function. And that could be okay. That could be argued on Google's part if they wanted to argue that. Um, I think they're just too afraid at this point because $170 million is $170 million. Even though we're talking about billions and billions and billions of dollars that have been brought in, there's been a huge cut to that now because of COPA fines and fear. They've, they've lost the ability to save videos into the library. That was extremely important to my daughter, who's nine years old, because she, is, she was fairly nonverbal. And YouTube, believe it or not, has been exponentially important to her verbally developing. Mm. Um, I'm a little over some of the songs that I listen to every day. <laughs> um, thanks, Baby Shark, for coming out with your Wash Your Hands song. I hear that now 90 times a day. But hey, she knows how to wash her hands. There you go. Um, <laughs> there are parts uh, that could be argued diligently that it is essential to the functionality of their site if they were able to get rid of the, the tracking data. So when we send a cookie from Authenticid, they know that they basically have to block that user from track data. We make it very simple for them. Google could use it. Um, Nintendo Switch could use it. Minecraft, Fortnite, Roblox. Those are huge predator predator candy stores right now um, with all the kids on online. So so Lisa, I'm curious, what what inspired you to, to go down this route? So I, I have a funny, mm. funny feeling that, you know, you being a, a, a parent is um, part of that, but I, I'd like to hear from you. What what inspired you to go down this path of, you know, you know, taking on this 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 huge task, and then, you know, why you started your own business to take on this? So, could you just talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. I'm the child of an entrepreneur. He passed away in '94, um, and when he passed away, he had already passed on so many lessons to me. Um, so, being an entrepreneur is in a sense, honoring his memory. So risk-taking, when he passed away, we were already making a 19% margin, net profit margin on over $10 million worth of corrugated being purchased by only three suppliers. So, wow. he, yeah, so, and that was in 94. So I can't even list all of the lessons in one day, let alone um, a podcast. But um, he taught me so much about business. And so I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, again, having six kids, I multitask well. Um, having seven grandkids, and literally there's no, there's, there's no break because my youngest child is eight. My eldest is 25. My eldest granddaughter is eight. And my youngest is not even a year yet. Um, it's imperative to me that we as a society, accept our responsibility in the fact that we are not raising children. We are raising young adults. That's number one. Agreed. Um, it's our responsibility to help them grow in order to allow them to grow in a healthy manner. We have to put certain protections in place while at the same time giving them the ability to spread their wings and fly you do that in baby steps you know you have to you have to learn how to roll over before you crawl crawl before you pull up and stand up pull up and stand up before you walk before you run etc so just like that you do the same thing with protection and you do the same thing with all of their lessons in regards to research and um, 
who who is safe to talk to mm-hmm. because that's all that's all relationship development um and and really that's one of the most important lessons we can teach our kids is relationship development because life is nothing but networking amen it, it is whether and 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 okay as growing up a single only child that's very hard because you don't have siblings to put you in check. Um, the best decision I ever made was to have more than two kids. I won't lie. Mm. Even though it makes me crazy. And yes, at times it has made me hungry and broke and <laughs> insane. Um, me and you both. <laughs> I would not change any of it for the world. When I lived in Orlando, I, I, um, I ran a company called Kids Camp. My now ex-husband owned it at the time. We hired uh, an individual. Um, and this was late 90s, early 2000s. We hired an individual who I won't name. I per- personally did the background check. I personally did all of the follow-ups and called previous employers nothing but an absolutely glowing review on this person they were a predator my three boys um at the time and and that's that's something that i i have not changed my kids will always be the guinea pigs my three boys were around this person he's lucky that he never did anything inappropriate. Now, my boys were never alone with him. Um, my mother, God bless her, she was, a, she was around when he was there. Um, or I was there, or my ex-husband was there. Um, nothing happened with my kids, but he had an interaction with his roommate's son. And the roommate was the one who called me. Predators are absolutely everywhere. And it's when you are actually confronted with them, because that's, the, I, I will say, as an American, we firmly believe that everything happens to everybody else. It's on the news. It's never going to happen to who? To us. Until it does. Right. And when it did, that I think is when I gained my nickname of Mama Bear. Because I went and confronted him. There was, uh, this is probably the nicest thing I'll ever say about my ex-husband, but that poor man had no chance. Like, I grabbed him and threw him up against the wall and his bail bonds from the standing there. He's like, you can't do that. I'm like, oh, watch me. And I asked him if he had ever touched my kids with my hand around his throat. There was no question. I was absolutely going to go as far as necessary for my kids. Um, and he swore that he didn't. And yes, I asked my kids a whole bunch of non-leading questions and determined that he was not lying. Um, but when it comes into your yard, that all of a sudden makes it imperative for the rest of your life to make sure it never happens again. And I'm, I'm set to make sure that it never not only happens to my kids, but to anybody's kids that I know, to my grandkids, to your kids. That is my life's mission, is to protect kids at this point from predatory behaviors and predatory attacks. These can be thwarted. This can be done. There are algorithms already out there that can can detect um, predatory behavior. Okay, still, it's not perfect, Um, but they can, uh, the way things work right now with social media is that the social media company has to actually report to their, their mandated reporters. They have to report suspicious behavior to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. That's how it goes. For example, if you don't report it and you just block and delete someone, 
that does nothing. Interesting. That just that that just gives them the ability to do it to somebody else. Right. And that's whether you're, that's whether you're an adult talking about a scammer. That's an adult who has been stalked by some creepy person. That no, you have to do something. We've become so disconnected. Um, you know, people people argue over politics and they block a friend from 30 years ago, um, which is stupid. But you have to follow the things that are in place or else we can't get rid of these people. We can't develop the algorithm further to determine predatory behaviors and how they move online. Um, so you have to report it. And that's really hard. People are embarrassed. They're humiliated. They feel stupid because they've been taken advantage of or whatever. Right. You have to, you, that's why I said, you know, the, 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 the three biggest diseases we're fighting right now is, does not include COVID-19. It is gluttony, greed, and pride. Kids have no problem whatsoever. 75% of all kids have said that in exchange for the promise of goods or services, they have no problem giving up proprietary information. They will give out your credit card. They will give out your address. They will give out their, their home phone number. They will, you know, they, they have no problem giving out that information because kids believe that social media was created. And it was, I believe, with them to, for a positive reason, to maintain social connectivity and positivity on a good thing. The problem is, is that human nature we all have a bad day and we tend to turn everything into Swiss cheese and blow holes into everything that's good. That's where you develop trolls and those people that you, you know, need to take a break from for 30 days on Facebook because they're so negative or they, you know, you don't want to necessarily unfriend them, but you, if I hear one more political post from that person, I'm going to, you know, go crazy or whatever. Oh yeah. But we, but, but that's how we become disconnected. Instead of saying, hey, are you okay? Because I've noticed that you've kind of taken a turn. Or, hey, that's not right. Don't do that. I'm going to let you know I'm doing X, Y, Z. Um, or, you know, don't tell them that you're going to do X, Y, Z and just do it. Um, there are flaws within social media. For example, um, Facebook, Instagram. You can change your username. So if you... Don't screenshot, like when you, when you report someone for inappropriate behaviors, you need to screenshot their profile account, their, their profile page with their face and all that, um, and then submit that along with your report. Because if you don't do that, they're very quick to change their name and their profile picture and you'll never find them again. And they'll come back and get you again as someone else. Yeah, I you know I've never never really thought about that, and, but mm -hmm. that that makes that makes total sense. Crazy when you actually sit down and analyze it, and honestly, the the way that all of this came about, I had been put in Facebook jail. <laughs> 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 what is it? Necessity is the mother of invention, right? So, I had put a post up. Social X, X Y social media didn't like it. I went to Facebook jail for 30 days because it, it wasn't my first rodeo. And so a friend of mine and I had a good hour long, let's just take our ball and go create our own field and we're going to do our own thing. And there's not going to be any censorship. <laughs> and within 10 minutes, we said, hold on a second. We're going to deal with every dreg of society that we have, you know, no, we can't do that because I can't live my life with blinders on, <laughs> like, no. Right. So, so then I'm like, okay, well, well, why does this company, you know, feel the need to censor us so harshly? Uh, because, you know, there's decency and propriety. Yes. But why is that? Because <sighs> there are kids that are, you know, witnessing this, that they are there, they're seeing things. Okay, so what if we decided to give kids their own space? That's how that all developed. And then if I give them their own space, I have to make sure they're safe. And that's how Authenticate came about. 
it was a solution for a solution. It was a pivot. Well, we appreciate your time here today. So you 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 mentioned that you were on a, a couple different places on uh, social media. Do uh, you mind sharing where people can connect with you as well as uh, Absol- the websites? Absolutely. Um, first and foremost, please go to authenticid.com. Forward that link to your fav- your kids' favorite game sites, um, social media sites. Under FAQs on their sites, they'll say, you know, hey, have you got a question for us or do you need to tell us something? Yeah, tell them about Authenticid. Um, it is something completely free for parents and, and families to sign up for. The, the businesses are the ones that pay for it because they're the ones inevitably that are at liability and risk. And they're the ones that will get fined by COPA if they're not in compliance. The benefit of being preventative, predatory, in a, in a predatory manner um, is just a bonus for them. Um, and it, it, there's, there is a law out there that the attorney general start to enact that where social media and the internet of things is um, held liable for things that occur because of interaction on their sites. Like, I don't know if you remember, but Craigslist had to take all their personals down. Yep, yep. Um, that's a retroactive law. So for any parents that are out there that their kids have been approached by predators or, you know, have, have undergone attacks like that, they can actually be held liable for that. And nobody's really paying attention to that yet. Something's going to happen and it's going to get ugly. Um, they need to protect themselves now. So it's the companies that pay us to do our job. And we, ke- and we keep them in compliance. We maintain and store data on their behalf so that they are completely COPA compliant and GDPR compliant. Um, they just get what's essential to using their their services online. Um, and parents can change those at any given moment um, through our dashboard, which is great. Um, but authenticid.com, that's A-U-T-H-E-N-T-I-K-I-D.com. You can also uh, reach me uh, on LinkedIn, Lisa Manns, um, Twitter, I'm Lisa Man 6 because I'm a big Hero 6 fan. Um, <laughs> and, of course, you can go check out Kids Council once we're done with Authentic, because we are seeking um, additional investors right now, Jamal, because we, we would like to um, get Authentic Kid out on the market a little faster. Um, the time is imperative right now for authentic kid to be out there protecting the kids. Um, so if there are any venture capitalists or angels that would like to talk to us, um, feel free to get in touch with us um, through LinkedIn or through uh, Twitter at Lisa man six, or uh, you can email me at Lisa dot man's at Bella B E L L A V I E com. Bella V Inc. is uh, my company, um, named for my youngest granddaughter and my eldest daughter, Veronica. So Isabella and Veronica. So Bella V Inc. dot com. Awesome. Yeah, and we'll uh, include those uh, links and uh, your your social media handles and uh, the podcast description. So it's there Sounds for perfect. reference and, as well. And and I and you know I will put out. Um, they can text me as well. My phone number. Um, 757-358-8223. That's, that's not a problem either. They can reach me directly that way. I do pick up my phone. Right on. I'm old yes. school. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> so we got, we got multiple ways to hit you up. Yeah, and I Absolutely. Really, appreciate, really appreciate your time. And thank you for sharing all the lessons, all the wisdom and knowledge. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing how this turns out. And I know it's only the beginning. And uh, I'm Absolutely. To see how this turns out. Absolutely. I think it's, I, first of all, it's something that's desperately needed. It's, as I, as I refer to it, it is a COVID-19 pandemic crisis adjunct, you know, it's, it's, it's adjacent crisis because what we've done is we've created all kinds of issues, not just financial struggles, but there are social struggles, mental health issues. And then when you put all that package together, you just opened up another dark hole for these predators. So um, it's, it's clutch, as they say, with the kid, the hip kids. 
um, to get this put in place now. Absolutely. And so, that, so we can protect tomorrow's leaders today. It's our responsibility. So, yep. Thank you exactly. so much for having me on, Jamal. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you again.